All right, so I have this Wharfdale SW150. Uh, it's 150 watts subwoofer. Um, I picked this up and it's faulty. It has no sound. And I've confirmed that. You connect it up <coughs> to the RCAs and the speaker level inputs. There is no sound coming out of this whatsoever. So um, there's no short circuit on the speaker terminals or anything dodgy. So I think it's maybe something more on the control side of things. Maybe like the volume part or this part or something else pretty simple or capacitors or something. Um, I fixed quite a few subwoofers um, similar to this and it's normally just capacitors um, that go wrong or bad solder joints. So um, we're going to take it apart and have a look. So um, just take the back off. Somebody else has already took this apart and this is how I received it. Um, the screws are a H3 and there's a few of them around the outside. You've got to take them out and then I can imagine the speaker is probably plugged into the board or soldered to the board. You're going to have to unplug that as well. So never actually been inside a Wharfdale subwoofer before, so it'd be pretty interesting. All right, so I took out the unit, and it is actually pretty good build quality. These are the output transistors. Very nice. Pretty big transformer going on as well. I'm going to say it's going to do the wattage it says. Um, this is a fuse. Um, which is going to be okay because we get the power light. And it looks like there's only there's two outputs from the transformer. So I'm going to say the transformer's probably working okay. As soon as it turns on, the chassis the, the chassis is grounded from over in the main board, so it's not grounded through the transformer. I don't think. So yeah, I'm going to say that the transformer's probably okay and not faulty, and the fuse is okay. I mean, there's two fuses here. Um, pretty certain they're going to be fine. Just doing basic checks, you know, without power first. You know, that's sound. Uh, this is too sketchy, isn't it, really? That sound as well. So, what could be going on? The fuses are both good and there's no bad caps. Or well, obviously bad caps. <clears throat> this is uh, pretty nice, this is. Oh, there's a relay in here actually. Yeah. There's a relay and an X-Class cap there that doesn't look too good to me. You seeing that? That X-Class cap looks pretty deformed on the one side. I'm wondering if that's maybe faulty. Oh, I didn't hear the relay click when I turned this on either. And I would have heard it click. Hmm, I'm getting a suspicion about that relay circuit, but it could be anything like, I'm going to test the volume part as well. This is a pretty specific part. Hopefully that isn't faulty. Normally they go really high resistance or open circuit on the wipers. That's going to be, it looks like there's two wipers. So it's going to be your one channel. And it's probably going to be some sort of common, isn't it? 
I'll have to figure that out. Um, caps D E con D con. I've seen these before, and I'm pretty certain these fail without showing that they failed. Let me just check my YouTube real quick. Now all these crappy DE con brand. So I'm gonna have to completely remove this main one again. So I've seen these caps before, so oh, I've already got the uh, solar meter out. So I'm probably gonna recap all of this just to be safe anyway. Um just gives it all a refresh. Keeps it happy. I'm not really sure how old this sub is. There's no manufacture date. Um but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this board out and I'm gonna check the relay coil first, make sure that's not open circuit. And then this meter has a capacitance meter on it as well, so I can also check the value of that cap. This isn't nearly as accurate as like the fluke, but it depends what the value of the cap is, I might be able to test it. So I mean what's that as well? Is that another relay? Here it is. I haven't heard any relays clicking this, so yeah, I'm gonna have to do some testing. Okay, so I've done some testing on this board and I think I found some problems. So as I sort of suspected, this relay, the coil is open circuit. Uh, this one is okay, the coil is all right. <clears throat> and this is actually the main power relay. Um, so I'm going to desolder this relay and we're going to check it out of circuit. Now there is a diode in parallel with the coil uh, to stop reverse voltage, obviously because the coil gets energized. So I'm going to show you on the meter, we get a diode reading. But then we don't get a resistance reading across the coil or either side of the uh, the relay. So this is the, actually the output contact, it's normally open contact. Um, so you measure across this way, you get a diode, you measure across this way, you get a bit of a reverse voltage, 2k ohms, nothing, nothing that way, nothing on this side. So that means that this coil is open circuit. Boom, nice and easy. Um, I've also done a short check as well. There's no short circuits going on on the output. Um, you know, if we reverse these, you get a normal gate reading. So the output is okay, which is awesome. I've also checked all the regulators. There's nothing dodgy going on. Oh. So I'm thinking Maybe just the relay's gone open circuit um, just because of age. It just happens sometimes. It could be a cheap relay. I've also found as well that these decons are suspected. The majority of these are bad. Um, and I know I'm testing them in circuit now, but out of circuit. It depends how they're set up in circuit. It depends if you can get an ESR reading across them. Um, you can see the meter which you can't because I'm terrible at doing the camera. Um where are we testing? This one here. It's a 10 mic cap, but I think it's a 10 mic, is it? No, it's a hundred mic actually. Hundred mic, we got nine mics, forty ohms, shorted. Um, this one up here. <clears throat> Meant to be the same. Nine microfarads, one ohm. Uh, the mains, I'm not sure on these. I don't think we really think we're going to be able to read those. Nope. You need a bit more of a powerful meter than this. <clears throat> but we're getting open circuits all over the place. So um, 
as well. These must be affected by the capacitor plague, definitely. Um, because they're all failed, even this one is off what it should be. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take the relay off. Um, and I'm going to get some caps out and see if I can replace half of these or if I'm going to have to order them. But we're, we're just going to see what happens with the relay uh, when we take it out of circuit, see if it's open circuited still. So I'm going to do that. All right, so doing some further testing on these relays. This one is open circuit. And this one is actually also faulty, this good sky relay. Um, so <clears throat> this is a power relay with two poles, as you can see. And the way it's set up is this is meant to work. So these two are shorted on this side until the coil is energized, then this disconnects from this and connects up to these. And <clears throat> I was doing some testing and I'll show you the data sheet for this one. And that's not working anyway, so what's going on with that? There we go. So hopefully that's focusing. As you can see, open circuit open circuit and it's quite an evident failure going on <coughs> with the relay you can see the carbonization going on on the contacts see that that is meant to be a nice coppery bronze color but in fact it is black you can see the soot inside I suspect that that is caused by the auto power on and off feature. So when the sub is not outputting anything, it turns off the main power. I reckon that the on and off cycles from that <coughs> is what's caused this relay to fail. So, um, let's see if I've got the data sheet. There we go. <coughs> so as you can see here, the start relay. <coughs> It tells you there, these two are meant to be shorted, normally closed, until that's energized, then these become normally closed. But obviously they're not making contact because of all the soot. So I'm actually gonna repair this relay. I'm just gonna hold these contacts apart and brush them up with the Dremel. And I'll show you that working after. This has been about four days and I've got all the parts for the subwoofer. Um, this is the main power relay, it's actually salvaged out of a, another amplifier because I made the Mauser order after I figured out that this was also faulty. I sort of give up on the board for that evening, come back to it the next day, tested that relay and I was like, oh, what? The contacts, the normally closed contacts are open on it. Whoops. And obviously, I took it to work, tested it, and it was faulty. Bit annoying, but I still got one in time. This is the same type of relay, so these two are uh, normally closed. Coils energized, these are normally closed, and then these are normally open. So it's a double pole as well. Don't make the mistake, because you can buy single pole relays that have this amount of pins. Don't make the mistake of doing that, because if you install it onto the board, you will blow it up. And trust me, I've done it by accident. So don't do that. Uh, make sure you check your relays properly. Um, and you should all be good. This is the other one. Oh no, it isn't. Where is the other one? <coughs> it is somewhere over here. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, it's here. How did that happen? And this is the other relay. <coughs> connectivity these are good relays <clears throat> I should have shown you testing this one but I don't have a power supply at home yet this one I stuck 24 volts into the coil and it finally went 
and then it started coming on at like 16 volts and normal voltage so i'm not really sure what was going on maybe the contact was stuck and the coil couldn't open it i'm not sure i haven't took it apart but either way i'm just replacing it i don't really care so this is all the caps that i've got in i just need to desolder the old ones and then i can solder in all these new niche cons and we're not using we caps don't worry their general purpose for a power supply so for the mains i've got niche con ls these are used in quite a few different audio devices that I've worked on, so I think they're adequate enough. They're certainly better than Decons. So two of them, I think they're about four pounds each or something. <clears throat> and for the small ones, I've got Panasonic FCs. These are brilliant capacitors. Definitely recommend these. Um, Mainly more for power supply use, yes, but they are brilliant as well for audio devices and they'll work great in this. Um, I would have got Nichicon fine gold for all of them, but I couldn't get those. That's also for this. Couldn't really, I struggled to find these in audio grade. So I've just gone for Panasonic EBs. What do you expect? Um, I'm not waiting like three weeks. I think miles I had on the lead time. I, I want this thing fixed. Uh, 10 UF 100s. These are niche guns, as you can see. These are FWs, I think. Yep. Good caps. Brilliant for audio equipment. Uh, got more Panasonic uh, FCs here again for the 470. I need these for another device as well. Um, I think that's it, literally, for this subwoofer, I think, yeah. So, what I'm going to do... Oh, yeah, and I... Oh, yeah, I didn't show you this either. This one is measuring its, its value. You heat it up to 100 degrees with the hot air, and it loses its value. And that's a very common failure I've been seeing on the, this type of capacitor lately. These X grade, these green ones, I've been seeing them in quite a few different devices, Denons mainly, and they've been going wrong when they get warm and causing issues. So um, I'm replacing that as well. Same value, keep the circuit happy. And as well, I've also tested the volume pot. That is perfectly fine. Uh, sprayed a bit of contact cleaner into it just to help it out. And it should literally be the case of, I'm gonna have to snip the leads down on this relay a little bit. Just gotta be careful doing that. Cause they're not gonna fit into the board. And this other one, this should go straight in. There you go. So I'm going to solder all the parts and I'm going to test it. Okay, so I've finished capping and putting the relays onto this board, or well, these two boards. Um, are all good. Both the relays are on, big caps are on, um, all the small caps are done. One thing I'm going to warn you about is the aluminium heatsink because I've just had a massive nightmare trying to get all these screws back in because um, they all stripped out basically. Um, well, they didn't strip out, but they started just cross -thre threading for no reason. Just putting them in directly straight, ended up having to take that cap back off. And yeah, it's just it's, it's taken a while to get all these screwed back in, but they're all in. And this little guy right here took me a few minutes to figure it out as well. Uh, I, come for, I struggled to find a data sheet for that, but the back of this needs to be earthed to the uh, chassis ground. And then this one does not make sure that that is not short into the chassis, because if you put this on top of that, uh, you have to put the insulator between them both. You're going to blow it up, so make sure you don't do that. And I think that's going to work. But we'll see. All right, so we're going to do a power up test. And I'm going to see if it blows up. 
Oh, I heard relays. And I heard a thought. That is going to work. It's fine or not. There you go. Straight away. Some kick. I think it's definitely going to be enough to aid these speakers, but I might end up buying another one of these. That's going to cause trouble, that is. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let it uh, bias up a bit first before I turn it off, but. It's working. <laughs> so I've had this running for a while and it's been working fine. So it's been the repair of a Wharfdale SW150 subwoofer, active. Um, it's pretty violent to be fair. Um, so I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that police is uh, for me. <laughs> rattling something on the wall already so I'm gonna have to set this thing up and probably only use it when nobody's around so but these are all right these are mainly mid-range speakers um more than bass so and I, I can adjust that amplifier pretty well so they're all right to use but this is a it's a pretty pretty good subwoofer so hopefully uh that can help you repair it Thanks for watching.